Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint, and today's video is going to be a little bit different to usual, and that's because instead of unboxing and reviewing a single piece of tech for the channel, I want to show you around my new desk setup. It's where I sit and work for 5-8 to eight hours a day, as well as where I plan, script and edit my weekly YouTube videos. So I wanted to create a space that's not only productive with everything I need on hand, but somewhere that I actually want to be. Well today I'll cover where I got each item from, how I'm using it and what my future plans are. I've also linked to everything below along with any discount codes, so if there's something that you like the look of, you can check it out. So the first thing that I've got to show you, which is literally the centerpiece of this whole setup, is the desk itself. It's called the Sway Standing Desk and it's from a company called Ergon Office who are based in Canada. And this thing is just stunning. It measures 30 inches by 72 inches wide. So it's pretty wide but it's not ridiculous enough that you need extra support. But it's certainly the widest desk that I've ever owned. When it comes to putting it together, it's really easy. It came with all of the instructions and even a YouTube video showing every step. And the fact the holes were pre-drilled made lining everything up even easier. So I opted for the solid walnut top, although they have four different colours to choose from. I then went for the all black frame with the motorised legs, which I think work really well together. Now I've had a few different standing desks over the years, but the control panel on this one is totally different. So instead of having a few buttons hanging down that you'd normally press, they've integrated this swipe panel into the desk itself. Tap the screen and it shows you the current height, then swipe up and it moves to my save standing position. Now I'll be honest, I probably sit down for 80 to 90% of my day, but the fact that I can stand at the press or swipe of a button is just awesome. And there's something elegant about just swiping rather than tapping a button. Then when I'm ready to sit, I just swipe down again and it resets to my saved sitting position. But as for the overall look of the desk, I'm really happy with the combo that I've gone for. I think the walnut top and the black legs works really well together. Right, let's talk monitors. So this here is the 40WP95C, which is LG's 40 inch ultra wide curved monitor. I've had this for about 9 months now and it's done me really well. Now this is classed as a 5K 2K resolution, so it's a 5K horizontal by 2K vertical, so it's not a true 5K display. But I use this for my day job, editing photos, writing my weekly scripts and editing my YouTube videos. I think the colours are good and the brightness is decent, but the main selling point for me is the screen real estate. Being able to fit multiple windows side by side without compromise is awesome. Now this is the second ultra wide monitor that I've owned, and after having these two I could not go back to a single flat screen display. Now it does suffer very slightly from screen glare if you look at it from the side, but straight on this screen is almost perfect and the detail is great. Around the back I've stuck an LED strip which gives me a nice ambient glow when I need it. I usually have them set to white, but as they are LifeX lights, I can control them and change them to any colour that I'd like. And you might have noticed that across the top of the monitor I've got this BenQ screen bar halo. This gives me a nice light across the desk without actually affecting the screen. And it means I can control the lights using this little control box on the side. All you need to do is spin the dial and you can either change the temperature or the brightness of this light. I've only had this for a few months and seriously thought they looked a little bit gimmicky when I saw them on Instagram. But after using them for a few months I can see why they are so popular. Connected to the screen is my 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. So this is the 2021 model which I've been using every single day since it launched. And just like the screen, I use it for work, scripting videos, YouTube and editing photos. It handles everything that I throw at it and I really cannot see me upgrading anytime soon. I opted for the 1TB SSD to ensure that I've always got enough space on the go, but I also always use the SanDisk Extreme SSDs to store and back up my data. I really should sort myself out with a NAS drive while I'm at home, but these are easy enough to carry around while I'm editing. Now I could go for a Mac Mini as I think they would look awesome on the setup, but I like the portability of the MacBook Pro. Sure it's a 16 inch so it's not the ideal laptop to carry around, but I do still use it around the house. Like if I want to sit in the garden or on my sofa while I write a script, well I can. But 90% of the time it sits in this walnut dock from Grovemade, which matches the desktop colouring almost perfectly. It keeps it tucked away behind the screen and I can still use it while docked. So while the MacBook is docked, I use this keyboard and mouse combo, which is the Logitech MX Keys and MX Master 3 mouse. These are looking a little tired, but I've been using them every single day since 2020, so three years now. And you know what? These have been perfect for me. The keys are shallow but responsive, and I've always been a fan of the separate number pad on the side. And as for the mouse, it is incredibly comfy to use. So they connect to my MacBook via Bluetooth and they don't require a dongle, and then they can be charged via USB-C. 
If I had to take a guess, I would say I get around two months of use out of them before needing a charge. And under that, I'm using this Grove made felt desk pad. And this is their dark gray in medium. Now I'm using one of these for two reasons. First, it helps protect the wood as I don't really want to risk scratching it or wearing it down. And secondly, the contrast looks nice against the walnut. It also doesn't snag at all. So the mouse glides over it perfectly. Now I used to have a full desk pad on my old setup and I liked that quite a lot. But for this new desk, I think I'll stick with the medium or I might even order the medium plus. Moving on to the chair. This is the Herman Miller Aeron, which I got towards the end of last year. It's pretty expensive for a chair, but I do sit in it most days and I can say it's the comfiest chair that I've ever owned. Essentially, it's an extremely supportive, super adjustable office chair. The bottom and the back support is mesh and it feels like you're floating when you're sitting in it. The only thing it does lack though is the neck and the head support, which is something that I normally go for. Although I know you can buy a third party headrest for it instead. So I went for the all black version, which I think is now part of their gaming range. But other than the color is no different to the normal Aeron chair. Now, although the casters are suitable for carpet and will work just fine, I've still put down a hard plastic mat. One reason is because it does make it a little bit easier to move around. And secondly, it protects my carpet from wearing out quicker. It's got little spikes underneath to keep it in place. And as for the carpet, I know this is either a love or a hate thing, but personally, I prefer having carpet over hard flooring. It's cozier, comfier, and helps with soundproofing in the room, as well as does a great job of hiding those cables out of sight. Then when I'm standing at the desk, I use one of these standing mats, which is from Ergon Office. It's a thick rubbery pad, which is designed to help support you if you stand for long periods of time. So every week I record the audio for my video sitting at this desk, and this is the mic setup that I'm using. It's the Shure MV7 mic, which is a USB mic that simply plugs straight into my MacBook with a USB-C cable. I then have a Shure SM7B pop filter on the front, as this is thicker and longer than the standard one, and that is attached to the Yeti compass arm. I think this is the nicest looking mic arm that's out there, and it's really flexible. So I can have it out in front of me when I need it, and it'll fold away out of the way when I don't. I think both the mic and the mic arm work really well together, both visually and from a practicality point of view. But what do you think to the audio quality of today's video? So cable management is a big thing for me. It's not possible to hide every single cable out of sight, but I will always try my best. I think having a setup that is almost cable free can make a huge difference to the overall aesthetic of the desk. So firstly, I'm using this privacy screen from Ergon Office, which has a long metal strip across the back of the desk. This keeps all of the cables out of the way and means I can swap them out really easily. I then have a power socket on an extension cable, which also includes USB ports. And I've stuck that to the underside of the desk. Any cables that go to the desk or the plugs, I've tried to keep these out of sight using these plastic clips. These simply stick on using 3M tape and again, means I can swap the cables out quite easily just by unclipping them. The hardest one to hide is the cable that goes down the leg, as this needs to have enough slack that when I'm putting the desk up, it can still move. But overall, I think the cable management is pretty good and I am happy with it. And dotted around the desk, I've got a few different accessories here. So I've got a Grove made MagSafe charger, which means I can keep my phone out of the way and on charge, but I can still glance over to it if I need to. Then I have a snake plant here to add a little bit of green to the setup, as well as another massive snake plant in the corner. These are great for darker rooms or rooms that have a lot of shade, as ideally you don't really want to have them in the direct sunlight. I also have one of these U green charging docks. Now I wanted to have this on my desk, but I didn't really want to see it. So what I've done is I've actually stuck this under the front corner of the desk using 3M tape. It means whenever I need to charge my keyboard or my mouse or anything else, I can grab a cable and plug it in and charge the accessory that way. I think it's probably the cleanest way to have a dock like this on your desk. And this right here, in case you wondered, is a glass of Yorkshire's finest water. And next to the desk, I'm using this filing cabinet in an all black finish. So it's got the black cabinet as well as the black front panels. It's where I store all of the usual desk accessories and stationery items that I wanna keep out of sight. So what I've done is I've put a Grove made tray in here to keep it a little more organized with things like my SSDs and AirPods and pencils. I've also always got a cloth to hand to give the desks a quick wipe down before photos and videos. And this is my trusty knife that I use for unboxing items on the channel. Then underneath, I've got a box filled with random accessories. Things like my Sony headphones that I use for editing my audio. And this is a USB-C adapter that I use on my MacBook if I need some extra ports. Oh, and something I nearly forgot to mention is this little black book. This is what I use to plan my weekly videos. So making notes of what I want to film and marking them off as I go. Now over on my wall, I've got two frames here from Grid Studio. I've got a few others as well, but these are definitely my favorite. 
So I've got the Sony PSP, which is the first portable console that PlayStation released. And above that is the DualShock 1 controller for the PlayStation 1. And if you know me already, you'll know that gaming and PlayStation in particular are a huge part of my life. I've been gaming since the PlayStation 1 and I've owned them all. So this is an awesome piece of art to have on my wall. Now they've got loads of different frames on their website. And if you were interested in picking one up for yourself, I do have a 10% discount link below. Then on the other wall I have my YouTube play button for passing 100,000 subscribers, which still blows my mind. So thank you if you've made it this far into the video, I could not make these weekly videos without you watching. And if you wanted to know what the paint colour was on my wall, which is a question I often get asked in my other videos, it's called Silver Grey and it's from Next, but it's very similar to Polished Pebble from Dulux. Now as for the lighting in the room, well it consists of two ceiling lights which look awful, so I'm not actually going to show you these today, and then what you see on the desk. So I've got the LifeX LED strip behind the monitor, the BenQ light bar on the top, and I have a Govi floor lamp in the corner. During the day I have these set to white just to keep it fresh and clean, but at night I usually have it set to an RGB vibe, which completely transforms the whole look of the room. Now you might have wondered what's on the other side of the room. Well this is my gaming setup which I have shown a few times in other videos, but it's not finished yet which is why I'm not going to show you it today. But over the coming months when I do have it finished, I will do a dedicated video just for the gaming setup. And through here is a second door into my living room, which again I'll do a full tour on that in a few months. I still need to paint it and add a few more bits before it's finished. So that was my 2023 desk setup tour, I hope you liked it. I might add some more wall art above the monitor or maybe a shelf, but otherwise I'm pretty happy with this already. It feels minimal and clean yet still productive. Now drop a desk setup 2023 in the comments and I'll give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my house tour video next, as it shows you what these rooms looked like a few months ago when I first moved in. A lot has changed already. Well, thank you for watching. Please like, sub and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.